Hi guys, it's Amy here and today I bring you my June wrap up. So in June I read a total of 11 books, let's just jump straight into them starting from my lower star rating. So we'll kick it off with two stars and the first one I have to show you is French Milk by Lucy Neasley. This one just wasn't what I expected it to be and it, it was just frustrating really to read. It's essentially like a travel memoir journal type thing that Lucy filled in and, and wrote about when she went on a six week trip to France with her mum. I think possibly because she was young when it was written and maybe she didn't have the intention of it ever being published, I don't know, it just comes across in a really naff way and a bit kind of self-centered and she just doesn't come across as a very nice person in it. Throughout the book we have her own illustrations and like musings on stuff that's going on and then also photographs of the actual trip. She spent most of the time moaning that she couldn't see her friends and then there were just tons of drawings of the food that they were eating which just wasn't very interesting after like the fourth baguette that had been drawn it's like you know it's just a doodle it's nothing like there wasn't anything deeper there it was just a bit to me. So I don't know if any of her current stuff is any better but yes I'm not particularly inclined to go and pick anything else up from her. My second two star read for the month was my book club pick with my best friends and that is The Zookeeper's Wife by Diane Ackerman. This just wasn't what I expected it to be from the cover and the fact that there's been a movie made of it. You would assume that or well, maybe I, I just assumed that it was more of a novelization of a story of you know a tale that happened during World War II. It is a non-fiction book, it is very very non-fiction but just not in an accessible or enjoyable way to read. So it's set in Warsaw and Poland during World War II and it follows these owners of this zoo who hide and kind of help Jewish people escape the Nazis. On premise that sounds fantastic and something that I would personally really really enjoy but this book just took such a cold look at that and you just felt so separate from them like we didn't really get immersed in how they felt or what was going on and it was like the author really wanted you to know that she had researched all of these facts and they were completely true even down to like descriptions of certain things she would go into so much detail and it was like she was looking at a picture it just left nothing for the reader to imagine for themselves to kind of get to know the characters or feel anything for them because it was so cold also just the way it was written was just so disjointed it didn't flow at all it wasn't easy to read and get into the story because there were constantly like excerpts of certain things and quotes that she was putting in from the zookeeper's wife's uh, kind of diaries and things and instead of just like integrating them into the text so that you kind of flowed with it it just like kind of just oh it just was so frustrating because this could have been such a great book and I honestly have no idea how it I'm sure it's like won something or this this author has won prizes for this book I'm sure and I just I wasn't impressed with it at all. Moving on to my three stories for the month firstly we have White is for Witching by Helen Oyemi. This one I have actually read before I read it last year and I gave it four stars then so I've actually bumped it down a star just because I just didn't feel like I enjoyed it as much as I did last year and maybe that's just because I kind of knew what was coming, I knew what was going to happen in the story. So yeah that's a shame but essentially this tells the story of a young girl and her family. Her mother has died and like the mothers and the mothers before that have all died and their spirits are inhabiting the house that this girl lives in. She's trying to continue living there with her father and her twin brother. Uh, it's just about how she moves from being in high school to going to university. She's also suffering from a eating disorder. I think it's pronounced pica where you eat things that aren't usually digested by humans so she eats plastic and chalk and things like that which obviously doesn't sustain her body and she becomes incredibly unwell so it has a really great mixture of the kind of much more serious topic of eating disorders plus then this kind of mystical and spiritual thing with the grandmothers kind of inhabiting the house and the house has its own voice you actually kind of read through the perspective of the house i would highly recommend this one to anyone who hasn't read helen oyemi yet it is a fantastic book and I think it would have stayed a full star had I not read it again and, and just felt a bit kind of like oh I know what the story is holding and it, and it didn't give me anything more than I had the first time so that's a shame. Oh well, let's move on. The next three star read is The Black Cloud by Fred Hoyle. This is like a classic science fiction novel. It follows a group of scientists as they discover this large black cloud that is coming towards Earth at a very 
fast speed and they're trying to work out what this is going to mean for Earth. If it covers the sun it was going to cause kind of big disruptions on the planet and it's not going to be good for the Earth's inhabitants. Will they survive? That is essentially the story. I did really enjoy this one. I think I would have given it four stars had the science-y side of it not been quite so as heavy as it was sometimes because I found it a bit tedious to read because I'm not particularly like science-y so I guess like it was going over my head a little bit. It's set mainly in England and it has these kind of oldie worldy sciencey men and they're hilarious they're so like quintessentially British in the way that they deal with things and the way they speak and that like really just it kind of like made me laugh I like I really liked that it was a quick read and I enjoyed it for the most part so if you have any recommendations for things you may think that are similar to this, let me know down below. The next three star read I have to show you is A World Like Me by Louise Pentland. I went up to London and met Louise and got this book at her preview party which was so much fun. As soon as I got home I kind of wolfed down this book. It was a really light, fluffy, fun summary read. It essentially follows a single mum named Robin Wilde. She is kind of not having much luck in love and life and everything is not really going her way and we follow her as she tries her hardest to make life better for her and her young daughter. I followed Louise for a really really long time so it was so lovely to read this book and the whole way through I, I couldn't help but read it with her voice like saying everything if you get what I mean like I just had her voice reading it to me which was really lovely. If you're a lover of Louise or things like Bridget Jones's diaries or Sophie Kinsella books then I think you would really enjoy this one. I'm very much looking forward to seeing where Louise goes from here in respect to being an author just because I think this was a really great debut novel. My final three star read for the month is Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. This one is set during the 1950s and it follows a young man as he goes over to Paris as he waits for his fiance who is a woman to go off around Spain because she's having thoughts and she wants to just find herself in Spain so he waits for her in Paris. Whilst in Paris he meets a whole array of very interesting characters but one in specific is named Giovanni and he falls in love with him. We then follow his struggle with his own sexuality and what it means to him and whether he likes men or women or whether that matters and his own personal prejudices towards people who are gay and it's just a really interesting look into a person's mind. I definitely would recommend this one especially if you want to read kind of more classic LGBT stuff so there we go. Moving on to my four stories for the month firstly we have Dispatches from Syria The Morning They Came For Us by Janine Giovanni. I spoke about this one briefly in another video I'm not sure which one it was but this book fully broke me it had me in tears numerous times uh, and gave me so many thoughts it was just so incredibly powerful for the message it is giving and the stories it is telling. I think it's incredibly important for people to read this kind of stuff, although it is very difficult to read. Janine De Giovanni was in Syria kind of in the years leading up to ISIS and she documents that and she speaks to various people who have been like tortured and kept imprisoned and their stories and how they ended up being in that situation and how I think it's easy living in a western world to look at these countries and just assume you know what it was like or what they like how they ended up being in that situation and because we're so far removed from it it's not like we don't need to think about it. One story that really struck me was this one of this young girl who was just kind of protesting. She was you know joining in as you would if you were disagreeing with what was going on in your country as I would in England if that happened here and she was at home on her mobile and then suddenly was taken and kidnapped and like that to me is like you know this is happening right now I think that's what I'm trying to say is that like you can feel so far removed from something that you just don't like it doesn't even occur to you that it could be as bad as it is now. I mentioned in my other video that it gave me the same harrowing feeling the horrors of reading a book set in Auschwitz during World War II yet you have to remind yourself that this is happening right now it's not like you know it, it is right now and that to me is why this book is so incredibly important and I think everyone should go and read it so yeah I hope that garbled review made sense. <laughs> Second four star read for the month goes to Today Means Our Men Poems by Sierra de Molda. I think this may be my highest rated poetry collection of the year so far. I really really enjoyed it. Sierra de Molda has a brilliant way of just speaking and sharing her thoughts and I'm really glad that reading it physically in a book didn't take any of the enjoyment out of it for me because I tend to watch this uh, lady do her poetry like her spoken word poetry on videos online. I loved her videos so much I wanted to support her and buy the book and this is just fantastic like it had so many things that felt really relevant to me. I think that's what I loved so much about it and that's why I gave the high star rating because 
I think I need to have some sort of personal connection to these stories um, and the things that they're sharing for me to like it. I implore any of you who haven't gone and listened to this lady yet to go, I will leave some links down below to some of her videos. She's great. My final four star goes to Blankets by Craig Thompson. This is more of a graphic memoir because it is Craig Thompson speaking of his own life and experiences and it's one kind of specific time of his childhood as he grew up and then met this uh, young lady at a like bible like camp so it's a lot to do with his experience with religion how he came to be like writing uh, the kind of drawing comics and things and illustrating things and it's just a really beautiful story the illustration style is all black and white but it is stunning. Like, I could not get over how beautiful some of these illustrations were. Like, it, I was just blown away by it. All throughout the book, there are like full page illustrations and they're just gorgeous. And the story was gorgeous. I really, really rate it. So I would highly recommend to all of you. Moving on to my five star reads for the month. And the first one I have to show you is actually a reread. And that is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. This book, guys, I, I have no qualms in saying that this has to be one of my all-time favourite books. So if you ever want a recommendation for a book from me, go and read this one. So this one is set in Barcelona in 1945, and our main character is a young boy named Daniel. At the beginning of the book, Daniel's father takes him to this place known as the Cemetery of Forgotten Books, and he tells Daniel that he can take one book, and that will be his book, and he can do whatever he wants with it, but he can only have one. So Daniel finds this book, and it's called The Shadow of the Wind. Daniel wants to find out more about the book's author but soon discovers that someone is going around burning all of the books in existence and his may be one of the last. At its heart this book is a mystery novel but there is so much more to it than that. We've got love, deceit, spies, tragedy. It is a gorgeous book. Not only is the story fantastic, the characters are are second to none. Some of my favourite characters I've ever read from are in this book. They are wonderful and the words that Carlos Ruiz Ecuador, like I want to read, I want to be able to read this book in Spanish because if it is this amazing in English then surely it's just like mind-blowing in the original language. Like I cannot, like I have to put this book down. There are certain sentences that just like make me feel so much and so like amazed that someone can come up with that kind of stuff from their brain and it's just wonderful. So if you haven't read this one, put it at the top of your TBR if you can. It is phenomenal. And the final book that I have to show you today, my final five star read, and that is Fool's Errand by Robin Hobb. This is the first book in the Tawny Man trilogy. I can't really go into what this one is about because if you haven't read the two trilogies before this book then I definitely will spoil you and I don't want to do that. All I have to say though is this book was fantastic. I took so much enjoyment from it, the story was wonderful, the characters were wonderful, it made me cry, it made me laugh. Just Robin Hobb writes fantastic fantasy. If you're unsure about Robin Hobb and you don't know if you want to kind of take the plunge into the elderlings world because there are a lot of books I, from the bottom of my heart, would say that it is a good idea. I have enjoyed these books so much and although the first trilogy, the Farseer trilogy, isn't like five star, it isn't like amazing, it is thoroughly enjoyable and then to get to these books, like I would say it's like worth anyone's time. I would highly, highly recommend and if you've read this one, come and like whisper to me in the comments and tell me what you thought of it. So there we are, those were all the books that I read in June. I would love to hear down below if you've read any of these and what you thought of them. Tell me in the comments what you've been reading in June. As always, I will leave links to Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, everything I've mentioned today down below. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will see you soon. Bye!